Hi, I'm Heather McLean, Executive Director, Canadian Operations for EC Council Canada. And today we're talking about what it takes to make it among the top 10 ethical hackers in the world. To be on the leaderboard, you must pass both the CEH knowledge-based exam and the CEH practical exam, achieving the master credential. In fact, you have to unearth vulnerabilities across major operating systems, databases, and networks. You must also apply techniques like threat vector identification, network scanning, OS detection, vulnerability analysis, system and web app packing, and more. And if that wasn't enough, people who make the leaderboard must solve 20 complex real world challenges that would be encountered on the job. And last but not least, you have to pass a rigorous six hour challenge that replicates real corporate networks. And this quarter, I'm excited to say that a Canadian has made the leaderboard. Only the second time, in fact. So to find out more about this experience, I'm speaking with Julian Richard today, number five on the leaderboard for the world's best ethical hackers. Welcome, Julian, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So you are only the second Canadian to make it to the leaderboard. Tell me what that feels like. Um, to be honest, at first it was a bit surreal when I uh, got the email saying that uh, I was going to be on the leaderboard. Um, I guess I went through all sorts of emotions, uh, up to and including, you know, being in, dealing with the imposter syndrome, saying, "Hey, I don't belong there," but at the same time, knowing that I had put in the work and uh, and basically um, finally accepted that I belong there and that uh, it was it was an honor to be on there, basically. It's really so Canadian of you to have that imposter <laughs> feeling. Um, so tell me, how did you get into be a cybersecurity practitioner? Well, throughout my career, I've always, um, I've worked in all kinds of jobs in the IT industry, including operations. I was a developer at first, not a very good one, to be honest. And um, throughout my career, anytime um, stuff about security popped in, I always... Um, either volunteered or showed myself interested in those types of projects. And um, I guess uh, when the opportunity came to uh, do it as a full-time job, I just hopped on it and, uh, and was lucky enough to, uh, to get a position in the, uh, in the cybersecurity world. Excellent. So right now um, you, you, you are number five on the, on the leaderboard. That's pretty impressive. What did, uh, what did your coworkers uh, say when you told them the news? Well, um, management was pretty excited because it's a great marketing opportunity. Uh, coworkers were, um, I guess, up to a certain point, um, they were excited um, for all the opportunities it would get up, get get us, and also uh, a bit inspired to uh, follow in those footsteps and and follow and, and get those certifications too. Excellent. Um, so, what was the challenge or the opportunity? like for you preparing for this you know what 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 was involved with you going through all of this rigorous um work to get to the master level well i'm lucky enough that i work as a pen tester already so there's two exams and i took them in a quite different span of time um i believe the first one was a year and a half before uh, i i did the written exam about a year and a half before the practical exam and um the best way that i was preparing for it was basically trying to get out of my normal workflow because I always use the tools in a certain way, knowing I was going to do the challenge and the, uh, and, and the certification, I was looking at those tools differently, looking to see if I could leverage them in a, in a different way and trying to see the full, um, the full utility of the tools uh, because I knew it was, I was going to be tested on not just the way I use them, but the way that um, basically how malleable the tools are and everything else. So leading up to taking those exams, I, I spent a bit more time learning the tools as I was doing the work, but at the same time, I was doing a lot of capture the flag online um, in different um, different websites and whatnot, using those challenges to play around because obviously on client networks, they won't let you play around. <laughs> you need to do the work in the time allotted and everything else. So I was also uh, supplementing the, the work with um, stuff on my own, on my own time after hours and whatnot. So obviously it was a lot of work preparing for the exams, the whole process. Um, and you said you had to think about it in a different mindset from what you were normally doing to go through this. Um, how, how has this made you a better practitioner? 
again, the same, it, it, it just flows into that same mindset where using those tools in a different way really showed me the potential of them. And instead of um, trying to basically it got me out of the rut of always doing the same thing the same way. It really made me experiment with these tools and know what they were capable of doing. And obviously reading up on them, uh, whether it was a training material, whether it was uh, just reading the, the manuals for the tools and whatnot, it really helped me um, basically get more skills. Um, so it really, it really did help me. I, I did, you know, second rounds of pen test a year later and found stuff that I hadn't found the first time. So that's obviously really Isn't that interesting. So, <laughs> yeah. So really the extra work and the practice and the, you know, going through the whole thing really paid off for you, obviously. Absolutely. So why do you think more Canadians should be pursuing uh, a CEH certification or even the CEH master? If you follow security news, I, I follow security news all the time. I'm sure you do also. Um, you always see new breaches, new vectors of attack, new ways of, of companies are, are getting attacked. And whether they're successful at defending it or not, um, having these types of certifications, especially, especially on the offensive side, if you keep learning new techniques and, and, and new um, avenues of attack, you will be better at defending a network. You'll be better at making recommendations for companies uh, to, to be secure. So it doesn't mean that it needs to be purely Canadian. If you're working for an, a company in, other, in, in another country or whatnot, it's a very, very, very good idea to have an understanding of how these people are, are attacking and how to defend uh, uh, how, how to defend against these attacks and what better way to do that than actually doing it yourself. You know, it, it'll make you, if you're, if you're defending a network getting your CEH certification uh, will make you a better defender just by knowing what kind of techniques the attackers are using against your networks. And going through this, have you changed uh, a lot or a bit of what you do in terms of how you approach your work now that you've gone through this whole process and have the certification? One thing that it helped me was to slow down a little bit because especially on the practical exam, um, you tend to want to do everything at once and you want to, you see these 20 challenges in front of you and you want to tag these challenges as soon as possible. Same thing with, if you give me an infrastructure to, for me to, to attack, then I'll be looking, am I going to go through this avenue or that avenue? It, it really helped me focus and, and focus on one thing at a time and, Doing doing the right steps in the right way, uh, of course, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you're focusing on one thing 100%. And that's what this challenge really taught me was don't jump around. Just do the one thing, go as deep as you want to go. And if it's not working, you're not finding anything else, just move on to the next thing. But don't start 20 scans and then be completely lost in your, uh, in your process. So it really helped me um, uh, have a better workflow. And from, from speaking to other people who have gone through this certification or others, um, they really talked about how the practical focus of, of the certification really um, made a big difference. Uh, and so I, I'm assuming, and from what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's the same for you that the, the practical component and the practical focus really was a big component or a big piece for you. Absolutely. It's an option that was added to the CH that is worth a lot, uh, in my opinion. Written is a written. Anybody can memorize para parameters or, 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 or workflow, but if you don't apply it, um, it, it, it'll show up pretty quickly if you show up at a job and, or at a new position and whatnot, and you just sit there and you've memorized everything and you don't really understand how things flow and how things work. But the practical exam really puts that into, into focus. You really need to understand the tools to be able to be successful in the practical exam. Absolutely. Now you said your colleagues were excited for you and management was happy about what this could mean for, for obviously for the business. Um, have you thought about challenging any of your colleagues to uh, try to uh, make the leaderboard as well? I didn't have to, they challenged themselves. Uh, I just spoke to a coworker this morning who, uh, who passed uh, certification and he's already focused on passing the CEH. 
Um, there's another one of my coworkers who we were working on a capture of the flag last weekend. He was learning a lot. Um, it was basically his first capture of the flag. He was having a whole lot of fun. We stayed up until like midnight working on it. And then uh, come to find out his next certification is going to be CH also. Um, now to challenge them to do the leaderboard, what I really want them to do is be successful and pass the certification. I don't want them to rush things. I don't want them to be uh, doing it as quickly as possible. The focus is really to, to pass the exam. And if they're prepared correctly, then they'll do it really quickly and they'll be on the leaderboard and hopefully they'll be number one instead of number five. You know, it's fantastic too, because in a sense, you can be a mentor to them for going through this process. So that's, it's really nice to see that uh, collegial aspect to, to the approach as well. Absolutely. I mean, if they're successful, it just means more business, right? So it just means more fun to try to break into stuff. <laughs> and how, what about a family where did they get with this meant and how important it was? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really lucky to have a supportive family. And um, I talked about the capture of the flag that we did last weekend. My family knows that I get obsessed and I do stay up till midnight. So they, they just took off and they went camping. They said, <laughs> he's going to be useless. We're just going to go away. <laughs> so what do you think is next for you in terms of your next challenge? That's a good Basically, I, I gave myself a challenge to learn a new uh, attack vector every week. I'm not very successful, not every week, because some are more complicated than others. But I really am always learning new stuff. Uh, and, and that's my that's my goal. I just want to be able to look at something and know like, hey, I've seen this before in a in a cyber range or in a capture the flag or in a, in a uh, hands on exercise or anything like that. And that it becomes just a whole bunch of stuff that I've seen before. And that's what I would like to focus on. Well, I, I have a challenge for you. And okay. I know we didn't talk about this before, uh, but I have a challenge for you that uh, I'll just toss out there. Um, we actually have a new certification coming out. Uh, it's called, uh, it's specifically focused on penetration testing. And um, it, it will be coming out very soon. And I think that should be your next challenge to go through this rigorous, rigorous process and 24 hour exam. Absolutely. We'll see. I'll have to look into it. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get the information to you. <laughs> absolutely. That's exciting. So any other uh, words of wisdom or advice that you'd like to share with people about this process and the certification and your experience? I think I, I, I touched on it a bit earlier. It's the leaderboard is a great carrot that's dangling in front of you, but the real, um, the real goal of certification is to learn. Um, you don't want to, memorize stuff so to just so you can pass the exam quickly and be on the leaderboard you don't want to um uh, compromise the uh how successful you will be because you're trying to do it quickly if you know the tools if you put the hand on work if you've done all the work that needs to be put in to, to get to the exam it'll go quickly and and you'll make it on on the leaderboard if if that's what you want basically fantastic and you know, I, I hope to see a lot more Canadians on, on the board and, and achieving their certifications. So thank you so much for taking the time with us today. Really appreciate it and look forward to, maybe we'll have a conversation again after you go through the penetration testing uh, certification. Hopefully. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.